If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Exodus 3, and I want to continue, in fact, I want to finish this series that's that's being preached on uh, defining moments. And when Pastor David uh, called me and told me about this series, immediately a message came to my mind. Um, One of the great things about preaching when I come to Gateway is I get to preach my favorite messages. And this is one of my favorite messages, and it's called The Now God, or The God of Now. I want to talk to you about something about the nature of God related to how He relates to us and how He operates in the now. In fact, He only operates in the now, and He will never change that. And understanding that helps us to relate to Him in the right way. This is Exodus chapter 3. Moses had been chased out of Egypt when he was 40 years old and by Pharaoh. He was there, he was, they were going to kill him because he had killed an Egyptian who was persecuting a Jewish person. And so he had lived in the wilderness for 40 years, and now God was sending him back at 80 years old to be the deliverer of Israel. And so he's asking God a very important question, Exodus 3, verse 13. Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. The Egyptians were polytheists. They they had many gods. They had the God of the sun, the God of the moon, the God of the Nile River, the God of crops, the God of fertility. They had all kinds of gods that they worshipped, and they all had names. And of course, Moses grew up there. He knew that. And so when he was going back to tell the Egyptians about God and to tell the Jewish people about God and to deliver them out, he was just asking God, what's your name? I mean, it's a pretty good question, isn't it? I mean, what's your name? What do I tell them? And God said, here's my name. Here's my eternal name. I am who I am. Well, it also occurs in the New Testament. This is John chapter 8, verse 54. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me. Of whom you say that He is your God, yet you have not known Him, but I know Him. And if I say I do not know Him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know Him and keep His word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Jesus used the eternal name of God in front of the Jews. The instant he used that name, they picked up stones to kill him because they knew he was declaring himself as being God. And we know that God has many titles in the Bible. Jesus has many titles, King of Kings, Lord of Lord, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley. There are many titles that Jesus has, but there are also names that he has. And this is a name that God has that we need to understand. If someone's asking you about your God and they say, well, well, what's the nature of your God? He's the God of now. That's what I am means. In fact, I am means several things. It communicates God's transcendence over space and time and everything. When you say the name I am, here's what it means. When Moses came to to Egypt and they had all of their different gods, the God of the sun, the God of the moon, the God of the Nile, the God of the crops, the God of fertility and all of that. The name I am means this. I transcend all space of time. I am the God of the moon. I am the God of the sun. I am the God of the Nile. I am the God of the crops. I am the God of fertility. I am a one-stop God. I'm all you need. I'm the transcendent God. And so instead of having all of these gods, the word I am or the name I am means I'm all the God that you need. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says I am seven times in connection with the way that He relates to us and who He is. In John 6.35, he says, I am the bread of life. In John 8.12, he says, I am the light of the world. In chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. Chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. Chapter 14, verse 26, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
in chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine. In every area of our lives, He's all we need. He's the God of our past, the God of our future, the God of our bodies, the God of our marriages, the God of our finances. He is the God of our hopes and dreams, and He's the only God we'll ever need. He is the I am God. He is the transcendent God. Another thing that I am means is it communicates His intimate and personal presence. God is a present God. He is an intimate God. The Jews in Egypt at that time did not know God at all. The only way that they knew God was through Joseph. They knew that God was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but their closest connection to God was Joseph. And they knew about Joseph, and they knew about God's relationship with Joseph, but they didn't know God. Even when Jesus came and He told them that He was the I Am God, the Jews didn't know God. They had, First of all, they had a corrupt religious system, but God was a God behind a curtain in the Holy of Holies. Only one man, one time a year, could go behind that curtain and be in the very presence of God. And I, I hope all of us understand what we're able to enjoy here this morning. When Jesus died, the veil in the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom, and that precious presence of God came into our lives because now we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. What we're able to experience every day, only one man, one time a year, could experience. God was a God who thundered on mountaintops. God was a God behind a veil. But Moses came. And Jesus came and said, no, God is an I am God. He's a personal, present, relational God. Psalm 119.90 says, your faithfulness endures to all generations. And what that means is God is always present with all people on the earth. There, ne there will never be a generation that God forsakes. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that, what? Not that he was. Not that He will be, but God is. Faith operates today. Faith operates now. And I've been a charismatic for many years, and I definitely believe in the gift of prophecy. I believe it's a, a crucial gift for us to understand and to accept. But one of the traps of prophecy, if we're not careful, is this. There's always the promise in prophecy that God will do something in the future that He's not doing right now. It's a trap. That trap is, God's about to do something, but He's not doing it now. And I've got some news for you. Your God is as great right now as He'll ever be. And your God is ready to do something in your life right now that is great, and you don't have to wait till tomorrow. Faith believes that God is. God is powerful. God is present. God is loving. God is able to overcome all my enemies, move all my mountains, slay all my giants, heal all my diseases.